B, so it looks like I think we're ready to get back I into this game. Uh, just a reminder, Techies has been picked for those of you tuning into the stream. Zai unleashing his minds here. Gets got in just a second here. And uh, he's planted one, but if he goes down for a second, I think the Skyrath Mage will get some vision of this. That's all we've seen. The Skyrath Mage did TP to the top tower just to try and figure out where the techies may be. Got a ward down very quickly just to get that little bit of... Just the one mine, though, is a decent chunk of damage if Aces Polar go for this top bounty rune. Then you've got the Tree and Protector with the Leech Seed and S4 who can go for a Shadow Strike to maybe set up a kill, especially if it's Lil walking in with zero armor. Yeah, that's a, a point worth reiterating, perhaps. They do physical oh, damage. They has got it. They get the a sentry ward down. That's one mine that'll be killed by the Visage. Live for now. It's in this kind of weird spot where it sort of gets hidden under the trees until you mouse over it properly. I don't think the second one on the high ground is likely to be walked into. So bottom lane, it looks like that is going to get the bounty room. Both bounty rooms likely to go Secret's way. This is... I guess, hey, they maybe don't get any kills with the techies and mines get dealt with, but... That is getting... one thing that the techies always provides, is that second thought about going towards runes. Yeah. Unless you have Sentry Ward down and you can clearly see it's not mined up, even if he doesn't get kills, it, it makes space for your mid laner to find pretty much every rune he would ever want in your side lanes to come in, so it will be Queen of Pain and Storm Spirit getting the buffed up bounties yep. here at 0-0. Zero, zero. That's a great start for Seeker. And with the techies, I'd go one step further. Not just going runes. You don't want to rotate through jungles. You don't want to move from lane to lane. Generally speaking, like when I'm playing against the techies, I just stay in my lane. And if I want to go to another lane, I TP to the tower and then I follow the creeps. If the creeps are walking there, you're not hitting, running into landmines. As yeah. soon as you start rotating from lane to lane, through the river, through the jungle, that's when you put yourself in danger. Yep. Sadoi so getting harassed in the bottom lane, though the same goes for Zai here. Both off laners. Uh, Bit of a rocky start, but Techies uh, will be being, he should be able to do just fine here. Well, creeps gonna move into the tower. The mines do a lot of damage, so he will find at least some CS. I reckon Agonims will be an item build he looks towards. Uh, Bottle could be an option. Yule's always a good item. Pretty much on everyone. Great on Techies. You can do fun stuff with setting up stasis traps. If you get Ags and Yules, you can sit back and just chuck in those remote mines during fights. A lot of options here. Poor it's... Staff also a great item. Yeah. Those tried and true classics. Yeah. I think, bit ahead of us, I think for stars, it's just the tranquil soaring. But, yes, yeah. Uh, from there, you can kind of figure out what the game's going to call for, whether you need to go for uh, something a bit crazier. But yeah, tranquil soarings to get things going, and then from there, you see what's going to be neat. Do you think the tranquil soul ring is, is better than bottle, or at least a, a go-to? Um, maybe comparable. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll see what Zai wants to do. Looking at the other lanes here, ooh, get some big damage onto Lil. There you go. That's just one line. See how much damage it does to the zero starting armor visage without any uh, Gravekeeper's cloak. Yeah, that hurts. Okay, so... so other lanes, what is it? Illidan on the draw in the mid lane against uh, S4's Queen of Pain. Right now we've got Sedoi jungling. He was the offlane axe. FNG on the Skyrath. We've already seen Lil on the visage. And G is that safe lane farmer on troll. It is Arteezy on the safe lane storm. You mentioned that as a possibility during the draft and something that Secret will go for here. And it looks like he will have... Complete free farm, so this Storm Spirit should have pretty much anything he wants. Maybe that means he'll be more of the ideal Orchid carrier that could open up for S4 to possibly uh, rush an Agony or something like that. Axe has already ventured away from the offlane. Doesn't want to give up any extra kills here, but a Tree and Protector could get that value point in Leech Seed and with a potential roam from Kuro. This is a, not a lane where Axe is likely to get much done. So we'll get the faster Blink Dagger just going straight into the jungle, but does give complete uncontested free farm to Storm, and also opens up the secret supports to move around the map. We've seen Kuro make moves towards mid, Puppy can be stacking neutral camps, and they can just move around the map a lot more and just find out where they're most needed. No support needed for RTZ. Lane seems going the way of S4 right now, actually really going his way. 13-9 and nine to the 6-4 and four Dro Ranger. This is a heads-up matchup, and S4 just completely dominating a full level ahead of him. Now we'll see a rotation from Puppy. He'll get scouted out by FNG on the high ground. Illidan. It's a silence before here. the leech seat, but one right click from Puppy and a couple more from S4. That's going to be a deny! Oh, oh, oh. Skyrath Mage! Nicely played denies by the FNG. first blood as well. Not yeah. just a hero deny, but when it's first blood, that's a big chunk of gold that could have gone S4 as well. Yeah, and with S4 already dominating that lane, getting uh, the bonus gold on top of that really hurts. It's bad enough that the Drill Ranger has died and now it gives S4 a little more space in the lane. Still not really good news for Aces Polar, but FNG making the best of an already uh, kind of crummy situation. That is one of the drawbacks of the Queen of Pain. We've seen time and time again that Shadow Strike 
allowing for the denies, even though it... Coming up, and looks like... Becky's gonna be camping around the top rune, but... Very if he's gonna wanna make a move down here. FNG. One for now, FNG. G. Oh, is he gonna get baited <laughs> into this? Ah! I, I'm watching that, I'm like, surely Skyrath doesn't fall oh, for this. Like, my. You, don't, you don't walk up ramps. That's, that's like, rule number one, don't be careful about going for rule, runes. Rule number two, do not walk blindly up ramps. You just need so much discipline to play against the techies there. That one, I have to say, felt a little obvious. I think that yep. one you really should know better. A mm. low health techies still auto-attacking you on low health. Hmm, I wonder. I wonder what could be <laughs> lurking nearby. <laughs> I mean, you know versus techies as a competitive no, That's player, what I mean. That's where that discipline comes in. Yeah. It's like, you know that, but when you're in the heat of the moment, the temptation is there just, oh, I want to kill him. That's my first blood. You know, yep. it makes it so much more tempting. Oh, that's painful. So, Zai, a slow start, but now, about recovery, halfway through level two, and all of a sudden, he's got Tranquil Boots in the beginnings of his soul right. Bottom T on town now looks to be claimed here. Arteezy with the last hit. Got a lot of farm on this Storm Spirit now with that tower gold. Yeah, he certainly does. Uh, he has the last hit leader, keeping up blow for blow with the troll. Now has the soul ring, and what's he picked up? He's Bloodstone, okay, he goes for the bottle, so... Still ambiguous with the uh, soul ring here. I feel like there's two ways they can do this. They can go Orchid on the Storm with an Ags on S4, or S4 can be the Orchid carry, then they just go Bloodstone on the Storm. Frankly, I'm not sure which one is better in this situation. Both have their merit. Yeah, I'll see just for now. It looks like our TZ just get a bottle out. Puppy is in deep. What are you doing? He gets revealed. Sedoy hits him with the Berserker's Call. All right, he'll be okay now. Looks like he's just baiting for S4, perhaps. Now a Leech Seed onto Sedoy. They blow him up with that Sonic Wave. Puppy will die for this, but S4 might be able to find a double. FNG gets behind the tower. Haystrun on S4. Classic. One for one. Decides, yeah, bit bit lacking vision, or he could have chased down FNG there. Doesn't want to get kind of... Gusted into a tower or something, but see Asus Polar, what their next move's gonna be. This is a Queen of Pain starting to gather some momentum. The techies in the offlane has got some levels and is doing but Arteezy on Storm, regen room bottled up, he's level seven and top of the net worth with the help of that tower gold. As he well should be. Bye now, level three, he does have his soul ring complete. Uh, feeling a little bit more healthy. G doing standard stuff on the troll warlord. Nothing really too crazy happening at this point. Things are settling down from this techies pick, and everyone just trying to find their initial battle farm. I think Drill Ranger, the big weak link right now, not getting enough out of this mid line. I keep pressing the tier two, and this is one thing that Polar just aren't really equipped to deal with having the split push. Axe wants to stay in the jungle, that's where he's getting the best farm possible. Uh, towards his Blink Dagger, but someone at some point has to go bottom and stop Arteezy just pressuring the lane, getting free farm. Uh, it looks like that may be the axe here. But gonna slow down his progression towards the Blink Dagger. What happened to the crew, by the way? Got sniped at some point. Dire oh. side. That's looks like that's what Puppy went for when he Oh, uh, maybe he died did. There. Maybe yeah, he did yeah, kill I, it and I missed it. Okay. Okay. I, I, th I think that was it. I totally, I totally no, missed it. I'm, I was even looking at it, though. Yeah. That's, that's the... Part of it. <laughs> but okay, so that's good. Makes it worth it. And then they traded one for one on top of that. So Axe will go back down bottom. Replay pushed up. He'll find some decent amount of farm. You know, it's amazing to just observe the reaction of Twitch chat or FNG getting that first blood deny and then giving up the first blood in the room, going the spam of FN God, you know, the oh, my hero, my lord and savior to the feeder terrible kicking from the team, the knee jerk four, gut reactions. Four. Yeah, going from just he's the greatest player ever to how could you be that oh. bad? I'm ashamed to cheer for you. I love the polarizing cheers. It's always, uh, always comical to, to yep. take a look at uh, on the. Wow, Arteezy, man. There is just nothing slowing this guy down. Now he moves into the jungle. He's got 2,000 gold up. If he wants the Bloodstone, he could have it at an unbelievable timing here. Like, uh, that may be the item he's going to rush. Closing in on that Soul Booster. All. Poppy being that mobile ward. He will get an Observer down, but FNG's right there with the Sentry. Take it out. They're trying to find Puppy. Sedoy, go for a gamble here. Puppy, though, very wise, of course, knows that there's a counter ward there, so we'll stay on this side of the tree. Die now, level four. Looks like Yule Scepter may be his next item. Already picked up the Soul Ring, grabs another Sage's Mask, and this is the point of the game where Techies gets a little more fun. You're not quite as mana-starved, and you can get down those landmines kind of as needed. 
get some good farm going as well and the landmines to farm some of those. But now, the polar side just gonna be look sit back and kind of not really so much as control this game, but at least get their core items up. They've got the Drow Ranger who's not really farming all too well, but at least getting just some basic uh, stat items to get their bonus damage going for the rest of the team. And the other big thing is is Lil's Vicious. This is a hero which they often like to prioritize a lot of farm on to get him online. Still zero, zero, and zero. Somewhat quiet this game, but now up top, G gonna get wrapped around on. Puppy comes in. Zai needs to be a little careful. Baiting it out is Arteezy. Long range zip comes flying through. The whirling axes will keep G alive for now. DP coming in does get cancelled. Gank attempt from Secret will not yield a kill, at least not yet. S4 on his way in, but the trolls already PP home. Blood will be shed quite yet. Instead, Secret will just group up onto this tower. This is another thing that Techies does very well. The landmines do physical damage that does hit towers. Boy, do they do a lot of it. P1 tower going down with not much of defense. Kuro, bottom lane, trying to take over this lane. And nice move from Arteezy just to move into the jungle and kind of pressure, fight with his team, because he can offer a lot, even without any points in the vortex. Just a nice mobile hero and good ganker, whereas Kuro would like to get level 6 and also like to farm up his point deck. It's initiated on by FNG, hits him with an Earth Spike. End of that little scuffle there. Meanwhile, in the mid, I thought they were going to pressure that tier one, but Will doesn't really have too much pushing power yet. He is getting space to find his level six. This is a big benchmark for the Visage, of course, getting those familiars onto the field. And now it begins, or at least opens up some options with Pro Ranger, who's still struggling to get her footing here. She picked up the casual Morbid Mask, still on brown boots. That's probably one of the scarier things. If she gets initiated on at all, she's going down. Speaking of going down, it's Lil here in the lane. S4 jumps on him. And in the Radiant Jungle, Jeez, old... looking for Kuro. Curling Axes will be enough to find Kuro. Arteezy comes in, but can't really do much to reset things. S4 will blink out. Whole arsenal of Asus Polar venturing through. They will look towards the Roche pit with Lion in the grave, but Visage is down. He has familiars here. Roche will fall pretty quickly with the, the Troll and the Drill Ranger, the Auras plus the Battle Trance. This still feels so, a little risky, though. We're going to see this game kind of play out very similar to last game, where Aces Polar, it's all about their mid-game timing. The Axe Blink Dagger is always the item you're waiting for when you pick this hero. And again, it's going to come at a similar time when the other heroes on the team are ready to fight. Your Troll's got an Aegis, he's going to have just a basic phase, Helm of the Dominator, and probably a Yasha, which is that extra bit of movement speed you need. Your Visage has his level 6, maybe his level 7 for the max out Soul Assumption, so everything will come together at a pretty nice time for the Polar side. And then for Secret, it's all about kind of avoiding those clashes and split pushing the map and just not fighting into that strong 5-man. Because Polar are going to do like last game, where they just 5-man try to take as many towers on the map as they can with this Aegis and with this Axe Blink deck. Well, it seems they'll get aggressive sooner rather than later. Tier 1 tower down bottom, Axe about 5 gold away from his Blink. He'll be able to pick it up on his way down. And tower will take some pressure, Illidan. Laying in the right clicks. Living Armor has been coming out left and right. It is level 3. Puppy just about to get that overgrowth. They'll let this tower fall without really much of a fight at all. Troll finding the last hit there. S4 poking at the Tier 1 mid. Low. There is a glyph for Aces Polar. It looks like they will just continue pushing down in the bottom lane with FNG Ling by. Is now level 7, so Mystic Flare online, hoping to find some kill. It is being spotted out yet with Blink, and he's making his way towards mid lane. S4 blinks towards him, though, and he's going to get caught up by a Blink call. Where's the fault damage? Is a Mystic Flare, and S4 going to get chopped. Okay. I'll flip your head. And meanwhile, on the bottom lane, Puppy overgrowth to try to delay this push as much as he can on the Tier 2 tower. It's definitely going down. Living Armor won't save it. However, Secret does get that Tier 1 in the mid lane. Last hit goes to Lion. Yeah. All things six. considered, great for Aces Polar. Yeah. Kuro does get his Blink Dagger level 6, so he can now offer kind of at least some similar ganking potential. It doesn't quite match up to what the Axe can do, but at least every now and then you'll find a pick off of a finger and be able to use that Blink Impale to start some things off, but... Does feel very similar to game one in that, yeah, Aces Polar started off slow and had that kind of three to 4,000 gold deficit, but right now they are the ones in control, at least for the period that they have this Aegis. Closing in on the Bloodstone. What's that on the Courier? The uh, Vitality Booster, and yeah, there's your Blink Dagger for... I'm on that. 13 minutes for the Blink Lion. I guess getting that tower kill in the mid lane did that a little easier. Meanwhile, Aces Fall are continuing high octane mm -hmm. play. Tier 1 tower in the mid falls. Another tower kill to the troll. Back to back tower kills here for. 
That'll really just help this grow right the tower and stealing the radiant ink can stack now. So, Ooh. getting some good farm coming really his nice. way. Yeah, Techie's still pushing up top. Zai now level eight. Yule's about complete. You have to come back to help defend pretty soon here, though. He does have the remote mines. It's, it's just where, if, if, yeah, Visage already with the gem pick up, like. Oh, Illidan, he has not got the Aegis Beast, still kept alive for now. There's an Axe Blink call in a second, he's just waiting to lose the damage off him. He goes in, catches that TZ, down goes your Storm, the Overgrowth comes too late. S4's Blink forward, he's really throwing the Sonic Wave though, and now he doesn't actually finish off Illidan. Illidan's juking around the trees, needs another screen, will catch him. One for one trade, and S4 blinks forward, looking for a second one. Looks like he will be able to bring down Lil, the Familiar's not offering enough support. G, as well as Sedoi. The landmine's actually doing a lot of work wow. here. Did a fair bit of damage. They bring down the Aegis. Now they might kill him once more. It started disastrous for Secret with RTC going down, but now they'll chase G into Oblivion. The dagger, only level one, but a slow nonetheless coming out from the Queen of Pain. They'll chase him into the tier two. S4 maybe needs to be a little careful, oh, but Yule's screen. from Zai. He'll put down a remote mine. Almost enough damage, but they can't quite get it. Now S4 called under the tower. A slam dunk. The Quap gets decapitated oh. again. And was... Secret end up overextending. Ah, they had to kill on the troll with the Scream, but he used the Scream during the Yules. I think Zai made the right play, throwing him up in the air to set up the landmine, but S4 just needed to... I mean, the communication just wasn't there. S4 knew that Yules was coming. He would have waited to use the Scream until he landed. So, so who came out ahead in that fight? Um, I think it's Aces Polar. They were mm, I would say pretty even. even, but for for me, it's like secret holding on when Aces when Aces Polar are five manning with Aegis. The fact you can hold onto your towers and break through the Aegis is always a slight win in itself. Even if like the gold exchange is kind of even, it's just mm -hmm. it hurts Aces Polar's timings. Their yeah. timing was with the Aegis, five men taking down towers and secret. Hold on and survive it. That's true, though. Aces Polar, they don't really have bad late game with Not Troll, all, yeah. Dro, Axe, even the Visage. A lot of scalability on this. So even though now is a time when they're hot, if they have to sit back and be a little more quiet in the mid game, I, that's necessarily a bad option. Illidan has really recovered pretty nicely. Still at the tail end of the pack of cores, but that Tower Gold really helped me out this Dro Ranger, who at least now has a Helm of the Dominator, which means she can farm in the jungle pretty effectively if she so, the Aces Polar, they're just looking to tank up on some of these heroes, and... Yeah, that's the main problem for the Jar range in that fight there, that just not having the extra bit of stat time. Like, even like a Sanj and Yashira or something is one of those nice items which gives you a, a movement speed, attack speed, and even that extra bit of HP which you need. Yep. Landmines now getting cleared out. The gem on the Visage doing a lot of work already. Picked up nice and early by FNG, similar to what we saw last game. Uh, secret, though. They lose some landmines, and they won't... Take that. It will not stand. Sonic Wave just hits on FNG, but now Arteezy comes zipping in. Bloodstone not quite completed yet. Finger brings down the Drill Ranger. Instant buyback from Illidan. He's already lost his Skyrath Mage and the rest of his team in a lot of trouble. Lil taking some damage, but Arteezy gets slam dunked. Visage still falls to S4. Now he'll just try to move around the trees, makes the space for himself. He will have a Scream, the living armor, keeping him alive and rather healthy. G getting low on HP, but it's Zai who may be forced into a suicide. Yules now doesn't have enough mana for the suicide. Easy dunk for the Axe and a double kill for Sedoi. A very chaotic fight, but this go round, it is Secret, I think, that finds the better of it. A two for three with the buyback on the Drill Ranger. Puppy hiding in the trees. Sedoi had to guess one way or another, and this time he will miss. Recovered by the Radiant side, I believe. Yeah, yes, Queen S4 of has it. Oh, that's the big victory there. Yeah, that helps out your team a lot moving forward. Techies is going to And S4 gets his Orchid techies. off that fight also. Yep. So even if the, the gold exchange, maybe even favoring Aces Polar a little bit, because I think, did they end a streak? Yeah, they may have, but they get some core items off that. I think Arteezy has his Bloodstone also, and he yep. completed it after that fight. So didn't even lose the initial charges, still sitting at eight. Another victory, a minor victory. Uh, for Secret. I just G did live on the troll. That'll get him very close to his S and Y. Actually has enough gold for it already. So the troll is still the, the king of the castle in terms yep. of network. May even look to just pick up a BKB to help out in these fights with the lion, the oh, orchid, right. yeah, there and the uh, overgrowth. I think the BKB is, yeah, it's going to help. But next, Roshan, Aces, Paul are going to be looking to secure that and then make a move towards some of these more T, well, even the T1 tower still standing at top. It doesn't feel like they're getting objectives like too easily. Every time Secret's there with a fight, and the fight's going kind of 50-50-ish, so Secret at least can drag things out. But we do have to kind of worry a bit about the Secret late game, not having that uh, true late game carry. The Queen of Pain and the Storm, both kind of intel-based carries that can both go great into the late game, but 
The rest of the lineup offers very little. The big problem for Aces Polar, though, is curing Roche without a gem. We'll hold that thought, though, as Kuro walks into the wrong place at the wrong time. Gets initiated on, but Living Armor gives him a little bit of a buffer. At least enough time for the uh, cores to get there. Arteezy and S4 doing as much damage oh, as they can. S4. They bring down the Skywrath, but it'll cost S4 his life. Not sure what happened to the gem, but now Arteezy and Zai will go down. A one for four, and Puppy will be on the run. Pretty sure that gem has been recovered it's by someone. It's back at the Radiant base. They didn't oh, they it, left so. it. Okay, so the gem's still sitting at base. Yeah. That's good news. But a one for four. So great news for Aces Polar. 2400 net worth change. That was almost big. For S4 blinked in with a scream, and if he ha his Sonic Wave was two seconds away from being ready. And if he'd had it, he could have dropped it down onto that big impale of Kuros and done a lot of damage, got some kills, but he got gusted and then he got burst down. Mm -hmm. S4 is going to see that fight and be like, okay, I need a BKB of my own. There's too much silence and too much kind of lockdown to deal with. There's a sentry ward, so they will be able <laughs> to see the mine like, Roche. Okay, they, we, we can see what's happening. Roche will be coming up here in just about a second's time. So Aces Polar will be in a good spot, but Secret will have respawned just in the nick of time to make a move towards Roche. And of course, they don't have the vision. That's a big problem here. You look at Radiant Vision. They've got a ward on the high ground here, so they'll see some heroes lingering around. They see Ilden making a movement that way, and they'll be pinged out. There's your BK beyond the Troll Warlord, though. A huge item pickup, and... Radiant's uh -oh. Courier just suicides into a double damage Joe Ranger. Not sure what that was all about. Yeah, it's a missed micro. That it's, it was even in that area. Yeah. It had actually, it was maybe trying to recover the. Did it drop the gem? It had 900. I'm thinking that was the gem that it dropped. Oh, so. yes, it did. It just fed them back the gem. I think it was just trying to, like, send across the map to try to recover a gem and then. It had the gem. Ah, actually, no, that was the gem they'd left at the Radiant base. Yeah. yeah, they had that at the Radiant base. Yeah, that was the crew. gem that after that fight, it okay. was just hanging out. I, that I'm, was weird. I'm scratching my head. I'm not sure what. I don't know what happened. Maybe a misclick. Well, obviously a misclick. There's no way that yeah. was intentional. Unless that is Secret's way of April Fool's. Here you go. Have your gem back. We're still going to win. That could be the ultimate in, like, cocky posturing. Um, I don't know. Chalk it up to question marks. So, how are we looking overall? Aces Polar finally pulling into the lead. First time this game, only by about a thousand net worth, but still in good shape on that front. About six thousand experience is their favor there. But still relatively even. On six Bloodstone charges now. Much item progression since we last checked in. What's the Dro working on? Probably a BKB for her. Ogre Club with 2800 yep. gold. Go with her Aegis. Think up, stay alive as much as possible. That's been the big problem for Illidan. Every fight, he's just getting... That last fight where he bought back, it was more than anything just to get give his team the aura. That's a lot of bonus damage. Give the Visage Familiars the aura that you can self-cast. So, uh, he just bought back, popped the ulti, uh, popped the Precision Aura, and then gave that extra damage to his team. Walks mm, over a remote mine there. Yeah. That'll get him low. Okay. Power of the Techies. Do thrill the bat, considering that there was a gem to get rid of that if he just waited, <laughs> waited up for his team. Yeah. That's the thing. Like, it, there are ways to counter techies, of course, but you really have to just think about it perfectly and always think, okay, what unit is out in front? Do we have detection? Is this area safe? And just a completely different mindset than any Dota player, not even pro, are used to. There is a techies in the game. Aggressive with his enemy jungle, but he's been spotted out by a dire ward, so they kind of know that what he's up to. It looked like he was trying to go for a courier snipe. Go Skyrath with a silence. S4, silence up. There's a blink call following up this silence. And do they have the damage for this? You betcha. Cat them out. And meanwhile, this... in the top lane, that's a tier 2 tower down. Dro Vis Visage will strike again. That baby falls. Tier 2 in the bottom lane. Arteezy wants to finish it off. He'll get it. Lingers around a bit too long, though. Berserker's call is there. Can they get him into the threshold? Oh, yeah, baby. It's another one. Two cores on secret dead. And meanwhile, in the top lane, Dro Visage still going at it. TP back from the line. Nice move from Kuro to catch him off guard. Zai coming in as well, but now the familiars start going to work. He will Yules himself, but Zai still in a lot of trouble getting stunned up. Manages to get off the suicide. No additional damage done. And now this tier 3 tower will be under assault. Living armor comes out. Doesn't Even if like they they'll be able to get it now. back up here, still a lot of damage done by this duo. And yeah, the they... power of the Dro Visage, man, making itself known. They can heal it up with the living armor, which is going to be kind of pesky here. And, and they make the smart decision to back off. Storm about to respawn. A lot of catch potential and uh, the Axis Walls troll were kind of too far away to offer any support. 
Those are two big kills for Aces Paul to have done. Now RTZ down to only four Bloodstone Chargers, and S4 seems like he just hasn't done anything since this got picked up. He's been looking for pickoffs, but Aces Paul are just not giving him any openings. None of the stragglers have been in a forward position. Now Zai, speaking of forward positions, caught by the Berserker's call. Yule's right into a decapitation. They don't even need it. Troll just gives him the axes. Side still on cooldown. Five-man timing. Age is still up. You haven't got the BKB out on the axe. He's got the money for it, but he'll just need to free up the courier and get it out. So it doesn't look like he'll have it for this push here. Even without this, there's a lot of pushing potential. Mine, the only one down, does some damage to the creep wave. Now the living armor gets chewed through, and they go to work on this tower. Nice stun on three from the lion, but at what cost? Berserker's call be off the mark, but the dunk is not. And that's a dead lion. It's starting to feel like Aces Fuller might be able to take game number two here. Make the opening to this series a little more interesting. In the bottom lane, there is a bit of split push happening from S4. But his pushing prowess certainly limited relative to the five-man here of Aces Fuller. Yeah, the battle transit, the culling blade, lots of attack speed. They're going to go in with the overgrowth here, but this is just trying to delay things for the push bottom lane. They lose tree and protector, and they can just swing top. They can just go for the double rex here. They don't even really need to TP anyone back bottom just yet. They can maybe TP one here. It's bit. not like S4 is really pushing that yeah, quickly. Yeah, he's I'm... got this tower down to about half health. They will back up. I think, I think it's a smart play from S4 to put some pressure on like that, but... Yeah. This is getting scary for Secret, quickly falling further and further behind. Now 7,500 uh, net worth and about 12k XP is the racist bull. Very cautious play, not going for the second lane of Rax, which I think they could have forced out. No tree and ulti, and tree was just flat out dead. That would have forced the Queen of Pain to TP, but deciding play things cautiously, get their next. They've got a few big Ooh. items coming up, and... Odin uh, almost yeah. dies in there to Techie Mines. Close call, buddy. Really seeing uh, the potential of the techies pick here. I mean, it's the second time Secret picked this, I'm being like a little underwhelmed, I guess. Yeah, I think it's been a, a little bit better this go around. Zai's yep. had a, a pretty decent impact, but unfortunately, it, it feels like they have bigger problems than just the techies. S4 just, with an Orchid, he needed to get more momentum than this. Asus Polar did a really good job not giving him any openings, and now his farm is. Kind of cripple. Uh, him and Storm both will go for BKBs. Looks like this is just a BKB game on both sides of it. Three on the Dire side now, and one on the Radiant with another right on the horizon. A lot of pressure on our TZ and S4 to do some big yeah. damage in these fights. Like, you've gone for these BKBs, but these are not items which will help you scale great into the late game when you're playing a Storm Queen of Pain, so... Polo side of things, they've got much better late game here. Troll the Jar Ranger, Visage as a core hero. Look really close to this techies. Uh, doesn't actually pop it. Die just mining up these little access points, almost hoping that they walk this way. Puppies look pretty dead. Yeah, they want to cut down this tree. He's on the run. Berserker's call, and yeah, living armor not going to save you from that. Polar now with backdoor protection broken, just move right into the radiant base. They get a ward down, and now this tier three tower up top will be under assault. See the techies to the north, but he's just kind of trapped off, blocked off from his own base. Here we go, Arteezy, BKBs, he just zips around in the fight. Puppy buys back, tries to come in for the overgrowth, but can't even get it. Instantly disabled and decapitated. Now Zai gets brought down. Kuroki's also died, it's just the cores left alive, but Arteezy out of mana, out of life. That's it, the GG's called a quick game two. Yes. become a best of three. It's clean it. slate now. Yep, clean slate. Next team to take two wins. 